Hey folks, welcome to Snowpal Software Development and Architecture podcast. This is uh, podcast number two, two in the series uh, of the Salesforce podcast. Uh, I guess I haven't given it a name, at least I don't know what name I would give it. So I'm just going to call it the Salesforce series. The last one, we kind of got started. I say kind of because if you hopefully you've seen that one before you're watching this. If not, I recommend you do that. It was 20 minutes of me trying to figure out the, the lay of the land, if you will. Uh, it, it was interesting, I think, at least to me. So definitely watch it just so you get some context to, to this. But we are really going to be getting started here. Uh, we've done just, we created the project in the last one. Gave it a name, Snowpal Podcast was the name of the Salesforce project we created for the AnyPoint uh, Mule application or the platform it's called. Let's go look at that, right? Let me go uh, share my screen and we'll pick up from where we left off uh, in the last one. Okay, let me share. I think I figured out this desktop situation. So I'm going to share my entire desktop. Okay, so we got as far as uh, this, we said we need to, you know, we, we basically, let me move this to tab one. Uh, we created the project. Turns out it's it's an integrated uh, VS Code ID. Hopefully I can change it to, let me see if I can change the theme. Um, let's see, let me customize layout. I'm just going to search for theme. Where do I go to change the view appearance, Zen mode, editor layout, center layout. I forget where the VS code, let's see. VS code change theme to dark mode. File preferences theme. Okay, file, preferences, theme, color theme, light modern, let's see. Okay, that looks all right. Um, so we are here uh, and we, we just try to explore what any point, uh, you know, when we're going back to, let's say, going back to Salesforce, where did we start? We went to products. Oops, we went to products. We went to, um, where did we go? We went to MuleSoft integration here, right? I believe this is where we were. Uh, no code integration and automation. Uh, MuleSoft AnyPoint platform, right? Uh, connect any data, app data or service with the MuleSoft AnyPoint platform. To say that this is where we started. Uh, not 100 percent sure because I just recorded that and it's the first time I'd been to that page, but I'm quite certain. Okay. Any point extension, and that's what this reads as well, right? No, thank you. Okay. So it says open VS code, find that from the desktop ID. So let's go here, search for any pack extension, pack. Has it already come any point code builder? And this is from the Visual Studio Marketplace. Well, that's trying to open my Visual Studio locally, the any point extension pack, but isn't that what we have? Any point code builder. Any point, let me just search for any point. I can't seem to find it. Um, Visual Studio, yep. It does look like we would need that uh, any point extension pack. Uh, does that mean it comes installed with this one? Extensions. Oh, was there a filter that was turned on? I did not click that filter. Any point code builder, any point extension. I'm 
going to say that these are installed clearly, right? Okay, so let's assume, uh, okay, yeah, this, this is probably speaking to the desktop ID. Did I click the, yeah, it's probably, if you don't have them, it says any point extension contains these, any point code builder, API extension, data weave extension. Uh, what was it again? Sorry. API extension. Oh yeah, uh, data weave extension. What else do we have here? Uh, Mule runtime extension. We got all of this. Yep. So it is installs because I was running the uh, the embedded, uh, you know, uh, the ID, the browser version, right? So we don't have to do any of this stuff. So let's go back. I'm going to close this. Probably even going to close that. Um, it says build an API from start to finish prerequisites. Create a trial organization, which I believe we already did, right? We just created a trial org. Uh, I don't know why it's taking me back there. Okay. It's a little bit annoying when you hover over this, this big menu pops up all the time. Download Studio, Eclipse based ID with rich functionality. So that's interesting. It says any point studio is an Eclipse based ID. Um, so I guess when you download it, you get an Eclipse based ID, not so much the VS code based one, and then install advanced REST client. Okay, I guess we are fine prerequisites. I'm gonna ignore that. Um, okay, API specifications, explore existing API spec. So public exchange is the portal hosted with MuleSoft that contains API specifications, connectors, and other assets you can download and use. So take me to exchange, any point exchange. Okay, so there are a lot of these assets, I believe. You know, it's many years ago, I did a tiny bit of work with MuleSoft. It's not since then. Um, so this looks a little bit like, you know, like the API, mark, the AWS Marketplace. It actually says Marketplace for Connectors Templates. But the AWS Marketplace probably is different, has a slightly different purpose. Uh, this one looks to me like it it is uh, one of those API platforms where you have these these other plugins and and uh, and tools that you can leverage. Uh, the more and more I see it, the more and more it looks like some other things I've used in other places. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so what are some MongoDB connector? Uh, so we need to build something with MongoDB. There's a Kafka connector here. There's a SharePoint connector. So I guess all of these are, are plugins. There's, a, uh, there's probably a large number of them, yeah. Is there a way to give, uh, I would like to see it in a different way, not like a sort by, um, I guess you can filter them, provided by MuleSoft, that's the only thing. Maybe other companies can provide it and publish it. Maybe you can have, uh, you know, that's why you might have other user organizations or we create one as we go and we, we make that maybe public or just internal to our teams essentially, right? I just want to see a, a different view of this like a flat list so it'll be easy to understand what's here but i think we get the idea there's there's a plenty of connectors uh take me to any point platform back here i have that opened already create your api specification it says take me to the api designer okay this is a new page and then we have the api projects to go in here to the design center oh we are back at the IDE. You know, the browser-based IDE, I mean, it works when you're collaborating and pairing, but otherwise it's, it feels already noisy to me. I actually would prefer, uh, well, this, you know, for this to actually be a desktop IDE. So when I do the third podcast here, you might just see that I'm not using the uh, browser version essentially. Okay. So this is the design center. Um, new servers. Templates, root, components. Okay, this is us modifying the the this open API spec essentially. So if, should I go here and then say components and then enter details? Okay, cool. We'll not go into uh, the open API spec yet. So that's the designer. Let's see what the example says. Uh, create a new API specification. Create new API specification file. Uh, 
Where am I supposed to go? Take me to the API designer. That's where we are at. Oh, that's it says create new API specification. What we have here is an API uh, project. Okay, let's copy this. It says give it a name. Enter hello world API. You know what? Why don't we just follow? I was going to do something slightly different, but let's just do it this way. Uh, don't change the other defaults. It's going to not go with the open API spec. I guess it's going to go with the RAML. Okay, RAML acronym. Oh, the RESTful API modeling language. Actually, I have as much as we have like plenty of APIs, thousands of endpoints. I have not actually used RAML. Um, let's see, RAML example. Actually, why why don't we discover there? I'm sure there's. Okay. Um, let's just go through this and uh, pick the default. Um, because it said pick the default. Let's create the API. Okay. It has it here. Um, now it says delete the editing text and paste in the following RAML. Let's just copy paste it. And just one more time, RAML acronym is RESTful API Modeling Language. It's a way of describing practical RESTful APIs. It's humanly that's readable by both humans and computers. Let's do RAML versus Open API. I've always used Open API. Uh, so keep documentation so our goal of raml is to provide all the necessary information to describe the apis thus providing a simpler way to design api so open api if you don't know it's you know it's a specification uh you know whether using postman other things you can uh you know export your collections as open api or create them as open api confirm and specs and then publish them to different platforms this is what we do at snowpal but looks like there is a another way of doing it which is raml which essentially is a restful way of, of doing this. We will take a look at this because that's the default we've actually picked here, right? Um, so let's keep going. Now that I hit, uh, I copy pasted this this section. Let's look at, let's see if there's a RAML editor so that we can actually see this slightly and slightly better UI. Okay, um, I don't want to install anything. RAML online editor. Design your API. RAML.org. Try it out. Okay. Yeah, let's do this, right? Let me just copy paste what I had over here. Um, this is, uh, let's see. Hopefully it's big enough for you to be able to see this. Uh, it's got a title. It's got a version and a description. Types, greeting, properties. Um, so there is a greeting endpoint. It's a get request. It returns uh, 200 or a 404. 404 is page not found. 200 is, is when the status is, you know, okay. Uh, it has a body and it says it's going to return this. So let's actually try running this request. So I guess this, you know, if you're, there must be a mapper between Open API and, uh, and RAML. So I think to me, Open API reads just fine as well. But I guess if you prefer this format, this syntax, then you could just do, uh, you know, RAML. Um, so greeting is the endpoint. This is a very simple endpoint. Let's go back to our page one here. Uh, there's not much more to talk about this endpoint. Now it says open testing a specification. Let's see, what do we need to do to test it? Take me to the API designer. Okay, I don't want to keep clicking the same thing. Uh, open the RAML file if it's not open. Yep, in our case, the RAML file is open. Still have to understand we were on a particular ID before, but we are in a different place altogether. Now we are on the designer. So I believe this is the design center and we created the RAML file. And let's actually try testing it. Uh, click the documentation icon if the panel isn't already open. Um, it says, Yep, okay, we click the documentation. And then I guess I hit get here and then try it. Send the request. Okay, you see there, right? It says today's 
uh, greeting. So this is the request URL. Let's copy the request URL. Um, so that's the whole URL, resources, projects, I guess the project ID, blah, 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 and then greeting. Hang on. Um, no organization ID header. So let's go back here. There's probably something on the header. Let's see where the header is. Uh, not seeing. There's no query params, headers. Wow. Okay, I'm getting the getting a hang. I'm gonna do you know share my feedback as I go as I discover more about this. You know my personal opinions of what I like, what I don't like. Uh, you know, just again, just sharing my two cents along the way uh, while we learn and discover this. Uh, I only have, you know, sometimes you come with these, uh, you know, uh, preconceived notions and opinions. I'm going to try and not uh, influence you with that when it comes to these uh, tools, the ones I've seen or the ones I have not seen. But, you know, we have these unconscious biases. We like certain tools. We like certain methodologies and approaches and maybe not uh, not the same with the other tools. Uh, but I promise you, I'm going to go with an open mind and tell you why, you know, I might recommend one versus the other or where my inclinations are just based on my experience, right? Right now, the problem I have is it's not showing me the header because, you know, when I copied this URL and I made a GET request, I was expecting for this to work, uh, but it did not. That's because there is no organization. It says there's no org header. Which means when this request is being actually as like so many. Okay, let's just do an inspect here. And then let's just go to network. Let's clear everything. Oops, that's actually wow. Okay, that's clear. Um let me just say hit send request. Oh. And we send the request, we go to the header. Uh, request headers. This is the URL. Request header. Uh, there's app authorization header. I bet this was not there, which is why that request did not go through. Let's do something here, right? Let's actually open Postman. Um, new window. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of R. Um, I'm just going to create a new blank collection to test. test. It's actually interesting I'm opening Postman because, you know, Insomnia used to be my favorite. Another tool I use for graph and rest. Off late, I've run into, you know, it just it doesn't feel the same like it was like many years ago uh, when, it, when it was built by a single developer. So I'm losing my, uh, you know, uh, Affinity or love to insomnia. I'm using. I've, I've seen myself using Postman a lot more, which it's a D, it's it's the most popular API tool out there. So why not? Uh, okay, so I create a collection. Let's add a new request. I'm just going to say, uh, what is it? Any point um, greeting, right? Or greeting number one or something like that. I'm going to copy the URL here. I'm just going to run the request, and we're going to get the exact same error that we got. We're going to go to the header. What we're going to do, we're going to copy this value. App dash authorization is the key. App authorization. Oops. Let's type it correctly. And let's try to make the request. No organ. Oh, wait a minute. There's a different organization ID. Project org ID, MS2 authorization, blah, blah, blah. Let's actually take this one. Maybe it's not this. Let's take that that ID and let's copy this. And maybe it wasn't that in the URL as well? No, maybe it's 6AA something else. Okay, let's try this. No auth header. So we need the auth header as well. Maybe it's that one. Maybe not. Um, MS2 authorization, there's a bearer token. So we can actually go to auth, we can pick a bearer token here, and then we can use this entire token. 
Um, wait, hang on. Do I need? Let's actually do no auth here. Let's go to header. Let's put the value and let's just go ms to authorization. Okay, there you go, right? But hang on, why did that not work? The ms to authorization. We use the bearer token here. Use the bearer token. Um, let's see. Is it because I'm trying to think this should I have uh, also worked? Uh, let's see, let's try to debug this a little bit more. Start proxy runner keys online. Um, the authorization will be automatically generated. It's not the JWT bearer. Wonder what the difference here is because we should have been able to do this as well. Let's actually look at Postman parallel token example. Okay, let's go here. Parallel token. Yeah, see, you Postman will append the value and blah, blah, blah to the request. So your API key. Um, parallel token enables request to authenticate using an access key such as DJ. So you can use the JWT token, but this one uh, should be the bearer token. Let's see, what was, uh, sorry, I'm mumbling a bit here, but let me go back. Let's look at what we put, ms2-authorization. That's the name of that, which is, I'm, I'm trying to jog my memory um, as to whether this plays a role, because this is a specific header that they're expecting. So if you want to send an any point to request, not as a header, but using the auth, what would we actually use? But there's basic auth, obviously that's not it. Um, digest auth, auth one, API key, key name and value. Actually, let's try API key. Let's try MS2 authorization. And let's pick the value. That works, right? You saw that because, you know, we did, we uncommented this, it would have otherwise failed, but then this is an API key, right? It's, it's, even though it, it's a little bit interesting because even though it says bearer, I, the structure looks a tiny bit different to me. So this, you can make this request as an API key. And I guess Postman sends it with a key name and as a, uh, as a token, because if it's a straight up bearer token, uh, API bearer token key name. Yeah, it should be, it's going to send the request this way, right? Allow all cookies. So see, it says the name bearer authentication can be understood as give access to the bearer of this token. The client must send this token in the authorization header when making request. That's what it was, right? If it's a bearer token, you have bearer. But then the key is it's authorization header. But in this case, the header was not authorization. It's a custom header that they have, uh, which is, let me, sorry. It's a custom, let me pull this down. A custom header. So it has the name of the key as MS2 authorization. Like in our case for Snowpile, we have our own authorization keys. And then you pa pass that API token and you're able to make the request. So what we've done here is we took what we were going, what we were doing. Uh, you know, through the designer and taking it to Postman because it, it's actually much easier uh, to do it using a tool. Again, this is where personal preferences might play a role. Tell me what you think, right? Do you like to do it using an API tool or do you prefer to use it through these designers? Now, again, there there's these designers do add some value because they are integrated. They, you know, you log in, you sign in and you have all of them in one place, but they still open up multiple tabs. So you have a proliferation of tabs. You can group those tabs on Chrome. You can just say add to a tab group and you're gonna say new group. You can say any point. And then, you know, we can move this. Oops, did I lose that? Add, add tab to group. I don't know what happened there. Okay, I guess any point. And then I can move these ones inside as well. 
is when you move the first one. So now it becomes a tab and you can, you know, you can collapse and expand, just use the Chrome functionality, right? But sure, that works, provides some structure, not the whole nine yards. Um, so here, what we've done so far, we've created a spec, you know, a, a RAML specification. We gave it a, a title, we copy pasted, we get title, name, and a description. Uh, and I'm sure there's a way to convert this. And I don't know what support for plat other platforms is. Can I take RAML and publish? Because I've not seen API platforms accept RAML as a standard, uh, as a standard, but maybe, uh, maybe they do. I don't know how, ex how open the standard is or how, uh, supported it is on other platforms. With open API, you can be pretty much guaranteed that most, if not all of the platforms are going to support it. Uh, so therein lies that difference. Hopefully I'm recording this. I've been talking for a while. Yep. I think it's recording. I hope it's recording. Yep. Uh, and then we, uh, you know, the, you can con compare and contrast this to an open API spec, which isn't easy, the easiest to write. You know, a lot of times we have scripts that we, you know, we generate open API specifications for what we do. And I'll show that to you as we go uh, in, this, uh, in this in this experience of podcasting. Uh, but remember uh, that, you know, you may take a liking to one format or the other, and then you go with it. it it's, it's hard to say that what you like is what everyone else is going to like. That's why there's multiple options. Just make a calculated judgment here and go with the one that's more common than the other. Uh, the fact that I've, uh, you know, uh, we've published eight APIs with thousands of endpoints at Snowpal, and I started to look up the acronym for RAML. It says one of two things. Either I was just uniquely ignorant about it, or I just haven't found the need in open API, just worked well enough that uh, we didn't need to do it a slightly different way. Um, anyways, that's that's at least my two cents there. So we ran the request and now it's actually, uh, let's talk a little bit more, right? So it created this mock response. Where is this actually coming from, right? Where is this response coming from? So let's say I change this test greeting response to hello there, right? And then, I hit this request, it says hello there, right? So I didn't have to publish. Let's see what publish, publish probably makes it public. We'll see what that does. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But by virtue of me just making the change here, you know, it, this is the mock response is being generated from here, right? As you could see, we changed that. And then if I add another bang and then I go back here, it saved, it took a second to auto save. And then, oh, hang on. Interesting. Um, I'm not seeing that. What's going on here? Where is that coming from? I made the request, it still says test greeting. And why is it test? It's hello there now. This is a bit strange. Um, we have two bangs here, as you can see it's two. Oh, I'm seeing it on and off. Hello there, hello there, test greeting, hello there. That's, uh, I have to understand this better. Where is that data actually coming from, right? It's, it's a mock response. Um, I was under the, I was presumptuous, I was under the assumption that Changing the example here. Okay, let's see. Should have required property today greeting because the properties there is today's greeting. So I have to add a G here. Okay. Then I'll remove, I'll add an extra bang. So there's three bangs and then today greeting with a second G. I go here. This shows hello greeting and test greeting uh, in on and off. Um, so let's undo some of these changes. Make a request here. I'm wondering, um, you know what, let's try go ahead and publish this version one development, publish to exchange, saving a new version.
that was published. We'll, we'll, we'll have to look up what publishing to the exchange means and where to go see more details about it, etc. This is if you're wanting to collaborate with somebody, right? Okay, um, trying to think here. Um, use mocking service without authorization header. So they do have some option there. Mocking service configuration, local settings. What I'm still curious about is where is this value actually coming from? Okay, let's make the request. Oops, let me go here. Let's go back, go back to network. Let's make the request again. Okay, VCS project 6A, blah, blah, blah. That looks the same. There's no difference there. Let's look at the project IDs one more time. The authorization is 9911. Um, let's go to here. Yeah, that's the same thing. And then the project org ID is 422 and ends in CCE. Um, that's pretty much the same. So why? Am I not getting hello there two banks? Mm. I don't understand what I'm missing here. Um, we published it, not that we had to, but we also did publish it. Response details, source view. Let me copy this one more time. That's not going to change. So I'm trying to think how to debug this actually further. Where is this even coming from? Um, let's see. Okay, I removed the whole thing. That still does work. Okay. Let's try a different endpoint, right? I'm just not that I knew how to do this RAML stuff, but it looks pretty straightforward. So let's just copy this whole thing. Let's create a new endpoint. Let's call it greeting one, right? And then this is going to be tomorrow's greeting. Hello there again. And then we'll take this tomorrow's greeting, make it a string. Should have required property today's greeting. Oh, okay, if I put in the wrong place, let's take this, let's copy paste this, let's remove this from here, remove that from there. And then um, the type is greeting, we're just gonna call it Type is greeting one as well. Apologies for these poor names. Yeah, we just split that. We have two types now, greeting and greeting one. Today's greeting and tomorrow's greeting were the properties. So this is not complaining. We've done, you know, as you can see, we didn't know RAML, but you know, we, we just learn it as we go, right? Uh, by example, it's much quicker than going to, you know, to read RAML specification and you can spend as much time as you need trying to get understand this. If if you like to do it, sure. Uh, we do it a little bit differently at Snowpal, which is why our courses uh, are much like this, right? Uh, you know, except that the courses are we do solve the problem and then come share how we did it with you, uh, and and sell it for like the cost of less than a cup of coffee. I think at Starbucks, less than a drink, like five bucks or something. Uh, but that's the idea, more pragmatic teaching, not so much theoretical teaching from page one of the book, of the book to page, the last page of the book. Nothing wrong with that approach, just not the way we do it, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see, greeting one is the next one, right? So let's see, when you go to try it, how do I, I go to greeting one, what does it get? 
So this is the UI. As you can imagine, I'm right now on my laptop. We have a larger display. Uh, you have a bit more room to doing this. Uh, but I have my two cents and th opinions as uh, strong as they are about such tools. We'll talk about that shortly. But let's go get it. Um, go try to ascend. Hello there again, right? Okay, now let's copy this. Let's go here. We still haven't figured out why there's a discrepancy here. Let's go. Oops, I've copied one too many times. I'm just going to go here. Call it two. Greeting one. Nothing changed except, you know, uh, we should, we'll put all this in an, in an environment variable and make this a little bit cleaner as we go. But it's just greeting one. There's no other difference. The header is here. So let's just hit send. Operator trying to find greeting one. Okay, why so? Let's see, let's see what the request should look like. We'll do one more time. Go back here, hit send. It works, it's greeting one. I'm gonna say we copy this whole thing. It shouldn't be any different. That's exactly the same. Okay, let's say that are trying to find resource. Uh, let's go down here, get the project org ID. Sorry, um, authorization is FF2, project org ID ends in CCE, CCE, that's the same thing. So there should be no difference. Error trying to find greeting one, and we don't have greeting two, resource not found. Same error, resource not found. Whereas with this one, hello world, and then test greeting. It's a bit bizarre. Um, doesn't add up for me because why is this any different? I should be able to see the you know, um, I have the exact same the experience, should be exactly the same. Okay, you know what, for what it's worth, I don't think all of these other headers might even be needed, but why not? Just, just for sanity's sakes, uh, put that. I'm pretty sure it makes no difference. Oh, wait a minute. There is a bit more consistency here after I actually added the user owner ID. Oh, there you go. Okay, so the project owner ID is needed. If you don't have that, it behaves differently. So, I mean, you cannot conveniently choose which one. I'm pretty sure if you read up the documentation for project owner ID. Uh, let's Google this. Um, MS2 for Microsoft, interesting. What is the history of any point platform? Any point platform, any point ID, any point. Sorry about this digression, but I'm just curious. Any point platform history. It looks like it's coming from MuleSoft. I'm just curious why the header's got a MS2. Like if it's MS, if MS stands for Microsoft, maybe it doesn't. Um, Let's see, maybe it does. I'm trying to see. Yeah, if you know it, please share this. So once we do that, we see some consistency. Let's go back here. So instead of hello there again, let's add a third bang. And then it takes a second to save. No. Could I put it in the right place? Yeah, greeting one. Greeting one. We're going to greeting one. Go to get. Try it. Send it. And then we have, we see the three bangs there. 
but we do not see the three banks here. Hmm. Try publishing it. I don't think publishing should have any bearing on on why this data does not change here. Hello there, hello there again. Okay, let's change hello there to three banks. Let's go here, go to greeting, let's see. And then we'll hit write, send. And you're gonna see three there. I'm gonna go back here. Send. Nope, we don't see three banks. So when we change the RAML file, we see the data take effect immediately, and then the request does not look any different. Let's see, let me go back here. Uh, now that we copied over all the other IDs, the main file, which I don't think. Okay, you know what, let's make sure I may not be presumptuous and be wrong one more time. So let's go here. Hmm. Actually, there's a better way to do it. We can actually go to a bulk edit. Uh, you know, on the laptop, it's a little bit trickier because uh, these windows become tiny. Um, but there's a bulk edit. You can go here and copy the whole thing. So that's much a little bit more uh, efficient way of doing this. Oh, maybe, let's see, let me add uh, hello there again, back to one bang, and then hello there is also, maybe hello there will be two bangs. So this should be two. Oh, it is two, and now this is one. Well, 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 okay, let's go here. Let's put a do dollar sign. It saved it. Oh, wait, hang on, let me make sure. I it takes a few seconds for the auto save. Oh yeah, that's okay, that's how it is. Yeah, so it just takes, you know, make sure you save it because sometimes there's a star here telling you you haven't saved it and you have to, I'm hitting. Um, why is it not, did it save it? No, it did not. Why? Try and click Apple S to save. Don't think I had to do anything to save. That didn't change. My own greeting one. Yeah, this is greeting one. Let's try to send the request. What happened there? Oh, strange. I didn't, I didn't think I unselected it. Okay, greeting one. Try it. This doesn't pick up the change I made here. Doesn't make sense. It says two minutes ago, so it's not saving these changes. It says save two minutes ago, but okay, now we changed it and now the star went away and I'm pretty sure yeah, there is. there are discrepancies here. Uh, we may have run into bugs with this uh, designer. I'm pretty sure we did actually. Uh, this is part of the problem with some of these tools and designers. They are not as predictable as they should be, right? Now this is, you know, an endpoint such as this should take two minutes to implement really, right? Because it's the world's simplest, it's a hello world endpoint for all we care. Um, but we are, I am noticing some anomalies here. If you're an point design center expert, and if you think I'm doing something wrong, certainly let me not be more than happy to 
to know what you did differently. Uh, but it's not saving it. Maybe at times, uh, there's, uh, because I try to save it, it there's an autosave. It said it's saved, but it didn't get picked up. And I noticed that it actually uh, had the star next to it indicating that the save did not happen. But the MS2 main file looks like that you need a point of this RAML. Uh, this header is clearly needed. Um, if not, it was not working, but it still got the response back. We saw the greeting, but it didn't, didn't do it con consistently. So I want to say that that doesn't look correct. Either it should have sh should work or shouldn't work, but it cannot work midway because you didn't have a header. Um, so I'm not convinced that is actually correct. Let's see how far into our recording we are at this point, right? Um, wow, we are uh, 45 minutes in. I think this is a good point to pause. I think we made some progress compared to the first, at least compared to the first podcast in the series, right? Uh, we're talking about any point design editor. We looked at it. We've created, uh, you know, we understood what RAML is, REST API specific markup language, right? Uh, before I say the wrong thing, RESTful API modeling language. Remember I said earlier, sometimes you can use, expand the acronyms not so correctly and it'll still come across correct. This is one of it, maybe, uh, maybe not. And also we saw RAML, we uh, took the example, we created the greeting endpoint ported that over to uh, Postman, picked up the headers, the authorization header, um, noticed that it's an API key, it's not so much an authorization, even though they had the bearer token, which seems a little different, a little bit unusual unusual to me, if you ask me, but I guess it's okay. And then we saw, we ran the request, we saw the discrepancies, because I had not copied over all of the headers, but it actually did work with the headers being incomplete. And then we added more headers, we actually went to three of them, and I think we're coming closer to some sense of consistency except the fact that the save was not happening accurately, right? So that's what we've done. And then we'll, we'll, we'll keep chugging along here, right? Um, so this is two off and in the uh, any point or the Salesforce any point uh, exploring the uh, uh, designer uh, series, right? We're gonna look at a number of different things in the, in the series of podcasts. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you want me to do something slightly differently, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Before I end, remember to check out our APIs on sas.snowpal.com or aws.snowpal.com. Uh, you know, if you're building mobile apps or web apps or microservices, and if you're spending time standing up backend systems like building, implementing, uh, testing, scaling, and deploying, then maybe you, you're spending your time where you don't pop up. Maybe you don't uh, where you don't have to. Um, solve your co-customer problems, leave the rest of the back and heavy lifting to us, right? Talk to you later. Thank you.